Yes. Oh, yeah. come on. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Come on. New wine. I really believe strongly that God is doing a new thing in our church. Yes. Man. I really feel it in all my heart that there's something new that's taking place this year. Yes, yes, yes. That's right. Amen. amen. God has promised me, amen, that this year he's going to continue. He's going to bring growth. Yes. He's going to grow. He's going to grow, yes. he's going to grow the church. Come on, Come on now, amen. So I just stand on his promise, amen. And, and and I know that as he gave me that promise, that means that, that there's going to be some new people. Amen. They walk into right. these doors. Right. Amen. There's going to be new leaders that get right yes, up. Yes, yes. There's going to be a newness in your life. Come on now. Amen. Come on, somebody. Yes. Right. And so I believe this is why the Lord gave me this, this word, showed me this verse. Proverbs 23, verse 29. The word of God reads like this. Who hath woe? Who hath sorrow? Who hath contentions? Who hath babbling? Who hath wounds without cause? Who hath redness of eyes? They that tarry long at the wine. Hey, somebody say new wine. New wine. Father, bless the reading of your word. Point it to our hearts here this morning. We give you the praise and we give you the glory. Fill us here this morning with the newness of the Holy Spirit. We love you. We thank you. In the mighty name of Jesus, everybody says, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, worship team. Funny thing of doing things on, funny to us. Yeah. Wine changes those who tarry long at it. Can I get some volume here? Wine changes those who tarry long at it. Come on, tell your neighbor, you remember. You remember. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Uh -oh. <laughs> Drink. Because some of us can't have wine. What a wine. What a wine. <laughs> uh, right. Let me break it down to our terms. Come on, break it down. Break it down. Drink. Drink. Oh, yeah. Come, on. Yeah. Huh? Come on now. Oh, yeah. Thunderbird. Oh. Yeah. Oh, wow. E. <laughs> Colt 44. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> But dumber. <laughs> right? Corona. Oh, no. But light. Ch it, it changed us. Yeah. Come on now. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah, man. This is why you would go to the club or you would go to the dance. Uh -huh. The 15. <laughs> the sweet 16. Right? Oh, uh, the wedding. Hella. You would go and they would be. They would have the dance floor, right? Uh huh. Uh. Come on. And then your lady would say, "Come on, dance with me. You're gonna dance with me tonight." No, I'm not a dancer. <laughs> right? Come on now. Huh? Like, I don't dance. I'm not a dancer. <laughs> Come on, somebody, right? Huh? But then you started drinking. Uh huh. Uh huh. In your BC days, right? Yeah, Before yeah, Christ. Yeah. Not now. Yeah. Amen. Not now. <laughs> We're not sipping saints. That's right. <laughs> right. We're not right. sipping ains. Right. Huh? Hello. But before before you came to Christ, you started drinking one. Oh God. Okay. Right, and then you and then two. Come on. You know, and then you she would ask, "You gonna dance with me? Then? You gonna dance? No, no, no. I'm not gonna dance. I'm not a dancer, right?" But then you drank three. Oh. Come on. Come on. Then your head started bopping. <laughs> right, you started. Feeling the beat, right? Uh, yeah. uh, you were sensitized. <laughs> huh? By the time you're at the 6-1. 6-1? 6-1? Truth. 
Come on now. The tenth one. The fifteenth one. Come on now. Huh? I thought you weren't a dancer. Hello. Uh huh. Wine changes those who tarry long at it. Huh? We are all. We are all. We are also affected as we stay longer in His presence. Come on. Hey, 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 yes. The same way wine affects us when we spend too much time with it Come on. is the same way the Holy Spirit affects us when we spend time with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Huh? The longer you tarry at wine, the more you experience stronger effects of the wine. Yeah, my God. When you tarry long at the wine, you begin to babble uncontrollably. Well, talk about it. Wow. Uh, right? You begin to babble uncontrollably and act strangely. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? You have those that, like, you know, they call themselves social drinkers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Social drinkers, right? Why do you drink? Oh, I'm just, I'm not an alcoholic. I'm a social drinker. Talk about it. I think they have a, a club or a bar in a social club or something. People drink there to be social. My question is, you can't be social sober? Come on now. Come on, somebody. Something's wrong when you can't be social sober. There's a lot of complexes. There's a lot of fears. There's a lot of insecurities. Right. There's a lot of issues. There's a lot of past experiences that haven't been dealt with. Come on, somebody. Huh? Right? They have those. So, you know, in other words, they're saying, you know, and, and these, these people, you know, they're like they're like the quiet ones. Come on, somebody. But I learned you gotta be careful with the quiet ones. Come on now. Uh, right? This is why I don't like when the church gets quiet. <laughs> Hello. That means I'm hitting a nerve. Amen. People living in sin, they can't say amen, so they're saying, ouch. Uh, right? Uh, but it's just, you know, and, and you have those quiet ones, and they're, they're, they're quiet, but then all of a sudden, you get three shots in them. Three glasses of wine in them. And let me tell you, girl, and this and that. And come on, somebody. Oh, my. Oh, my. Huh? Right? Always true. Break it down. Then come the guys. Huh? Oh, you got those, 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 guys, those guys. Come on, somebody. Huh? Come on. Right? Huh? You get a six pack in them, and all of a sudden they think they're the preacher. Oh, yeah, yeah. Come on now. Yeah, yeah. Come on here. Huh? All of a sudden they know they can quote more of the scripture than you. Wow. <laughs> they can quote more of the Bible than the pastor. Oh my God. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Right? And then they, they call themselves social, social drinkers because I need to drink in order to be able to talk. I need to drink in order to be able to have a good time. That is a lie from the devil. It is a lie. It is a lie from the pit of hell. You don't need to drink to have a good time. You don't need to drink to talk. You don't need to drink to get loose. What you need is you need some Jesus in your cup. You need the Holy Spirit in your life. That's what we got. We got that new wine in our cup. That's what causes us to be excited for the things of God. That's what causes us to be on fire for the things of God. That's what causes us to preach the gospel because we have been filled. Come on, now. preach it right. We have tarried long in the presence of God. Amen. See, drinking, drinking, that drinking will make you do strange things. Uh -huh. <coughs> Many of you caught a case. Ooh. 
Come on, yeah. now. Come on, true. Come on now. Because you were drinking. True. Right? Come on, you remember her, man. Huh? What kind of case? Huh? She broke up with you. Oh. Oh, my God. Come on, now. Come on. Because you were drinking. Yeah. Huh? Come on now. Huh? You started hugging up on the wrong girl. No. Oh. 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 Why did it cause you to do some strange things? Yeah, talk about it. Huh? Right? It caused you to do some strange This is why Victor Arvin don't believe in drinking. That's right. right. Hey, hey, hey. The church is open. Oh, you can have one. No. no. Okay. You can have one. The devil is huh? We don't know what one means. That's right. Uh oh. That's right. That's right. Huh? And, in the, and even if we could, huh? And even if we could just have one, we still would act strange. Yeah. Hello. Come on, somebody. Yeah, 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 yeah. We would still, we would still have to suffer the consequences of saying something dumb. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, oh. that's the truth. Doing something dumb, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can yeah. I be real with you? Come on, yeah. Yeah. be real. Huh? Come on now. Come on. See, as you stay longer at the wine, your eyes turn red. Oh. And you start to see things differently. Oh. Huh? This is why many times you woke up the next morning next to Scary Mary. Oh. <laughs> Forgive me if your name is Mary. No offense. I ain't talking about you. Amen. Come on now. Yeah. Because Mary didn't look so scary after a while. Come on. Huh? Come on now. I know you ain't going to say amen, but it's the truth. Huh? That's what happens when you tarry long at the wine. Your eyes turn red and you start to see things differently. The Garden of Yosemite teaches us that the longer we stay in the presence of God, the more we get soaked and affected by God. The longer we stay, that's what the Garden of Yosemite teaches. Yosemite was, was Jesus' prayer spot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. Do you have a prayer spot? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Some people say, well, Pastor, I've been coming to church, but ain't nothing changing. Why? Huh? Ain't nothing changing. It's probably because you haven't been in your prayer spot long enough. Wow. Come on, come on. Huh? Because that's what happens when you tarry long yeah. in his presence. Amen, amen. It's not that God changes things, though. No, God changes you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Amen, amen. He changes you. Huh? He changes you. And guess what? You begin to change some things. Yeah. That's right. That's right. right. Amen. You begin amen. to change the decisions you make. Yeah. That's right. Amen. All of a sudden, you're not making wrong decisions. You're making right decisions. Yeah. All of a sudden, you're not making fleshly decisions. You're making spiritual decisions. Yes. Amen. And as you continue to make those spiritual decisions, you're planting some good spiritual seed. And guess what? Sooner or later, you're going to reap a good spiritual harvest. This is what happened to Brother Irvin when he came into the home. Before he came into the home, he made a lot of bad decisions of smoking meth and drinking alcohol and running the streets and he was all messed up and discombobulated. But once he came into the men's home, he made a good spiritual decision and when he decided to stay in the men's home, he made another great spiritual decision and when he decided to graduate, he made another spiritual and guess what? Now he's reaped the harvest. Because he learned to tarry long. That's right. At the new wine. Good. Good, Pastor. Can you tarry yeah. long? Mm -hmm. Good. Huh? How long you been in church? Oh, come on. Sometimes we complain, ah, the service is too long, two hours, and then the pastor don't know how to shut up, and he oh, goes over oh, the two oh, hours. Wow. <laughs> my stomach's growling, and I want to oh, eat. Yeah. Oh. Sometimes we tarry long too much at the buffet. No. Speak to me, Lord. <laughs> huh? We gotta learn to tarry long in the presence of God. Yeah. The Garden of Yosemite teaches us that listen, when we tarry long in the presence of God, God changes us. God changes us. He changes us so that we can change things. Does anybody need a change? Does anybody need a new outcome in their life? See, just as people learn to stay stay longer and longer at the wine bar, wow. you must learn to stay longer in His presence. Yeah. The longer 
longer you stay in His presence, the more you will experience the effects of God's presence. What are the effects of being under the influence of the new wine? What is the new wine? The new wine is the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, Amen. Is the Holy yes. Spirit. Yes. Uh -huh. huh? That's the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, He says, He said, and later on we're going to read it. He says in Matthew chapter 9, verse 17, you can, you can put it on the screen. He says, Neither do people pour new wine into old wineskins. If they do, the skins will burst, the wine will run out, and the wineskins will be ruined. Yeah. No, they pour new wine into new wineskins, and both are preserved. Oh, amen. Man. Is anybody tired of the old you? Come on. Come on. Come on. Huh? I got tired of the old me. Come on. Huh? Right. I wanted to become a new creation in Christ Jesus. Yes. Right. Yes. 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 And that's what God did through salvation. Woo. But salvation was first base. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Come on, come on. Huh? But now, listen, we gotta be filled with the Holy Spirit. Yes, yes, yes. yes. With the new wine. Amen. Huh? We can't just be just a wineskin, right? We're just an empty wineskin. We just we just look empty. Right. Huh? But God wants to fill you. Yeah. Jamie, he wants to fill you. He wants to fill you. He wants to fill, wants to fill you with the new wine. And let me tell you the effects of what happened. Six things will happen when you allow God to fill you uh -huh. by tearing in his presence. Amen. The first thing, and they're found in the verse I opened up with. In Proverbs 23, 29, what does the scripture say? The first thing it says, who hath woe? What this means is that you will be woed by God. Mm, come on now. Amen. The yeah, first yeah, yeah. thing, the thing that happened, and it, isn't, it won't happen, it doesn't have to happen in this order, but this will happen. When you learn to be filled with the new one, God will woe you. Come on now. In other words, he will wow you. Yeah. <laughs> Have you been wowed by God? Yes. yes. Huh? Have you been wild? Listen, I don't know about you, but God has wowed me. Yeah, that's right, that's right. He's right. wowed me. Uh -huh. yeah. He wowed me when he cleaned me up. Yes, that's right. He, he wowed me when he, he took did. away the addiction of smoking weed. Come on, he now. wowed Come on. me when he took away Come the addiction on. of jerking alcohol. Yeah, yeah, he yeah, wowed yeah. me when he put a suit on me. Hello. He wowed hey. me when he learned. He got me to carry my Bible. Right, he wowed right. me yeah. and he wowed the world and he wowed my homeboy and he wowed my family yeah. when he brought me to church and taught me how to be a good church member. Come he on. wowed me when he allowed me to preach hey. my, the gospel. Hey. He wowed me when he licensed hey. me to be a minister. He wowed me when he gave me my beautiful wife, a woman of God, to marry. He wowed me when he made me a pastor of a church. He wowed. God has wowed me. I'm here to tell you, when you tarry long at his presence, God will wow you. God will amaze you. God will blow your mind. But you got to learn to tarry long in his presence. Many people want the blessing, but they don't want the process. They don't want to tarry at the altar. They don't want to tarry in the house of God. They don't want to tarry in the things of God. But if you want to be woed by God, you got to learn to tarry. God will have you in awestruck. Right. God to change your husband. Hey, come on. God to save him. God to change your wife. Come on now. Huh? It's like, I thought that woman wasn't ever going to change. I thought that man wasn't ever going to change. Come on now. But look at him now. You don't even know how to receive it. You don't even know how to act. You don't even know how to respond. Like, is this a trick? Pinch me. Wake me up. Hey. It's got to wow you. That's right. Got to blow your mind. That's right. So, no, that hasn't happened to me. You ain't tarried. Ooh, oh, my, my. Yeah, Terry. My, my. Well, I came to church, yeah, but you're you're like the jack in the box, in and out, in and out, in Ooh. and out, in and, in and out burgers. Hey. Come on, yeah. Come on. <laughs> we don't call ourselves in and out victory outreach. Come on, <laughs> come on, somebody. Yeah. You gotta learn to Terry. Yes, yes. You gotta learn to Terry with come God. On. Terry at the earth, and you will be wowed by God. Ooh. God will blow your mind. Yeah. Just Terry at the altar. Terry in His presence. And God will wow you. Yes. That's right. That's good, Pastor. Amen. Uh, That's right. Being amazed by his greatness and power and his miracles. Amen. God will amaze you. Don't you want God to amaze you? Try it. 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 Try it.
God still heals today. That's right. Yes. God still causes the blind to see today, the lame to walk today. Yes. And God will use you to do it. Yes. Huh? God wows me when he uses me. God uses me. And, 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 and pray for people, people get healed. Preach to people, people get saved. Yeah. It, it is a, it, I am amazed when God uses my life. Because yeah. right. 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 I know it ain't me, it's all him. Yeah. Yeah. The second thing that happened, the scripture says, who hath woe, who hath sorrow. Amen. The second thing that happened is that you will have godly sorrow mm -hmm. that leads to repentance. You will have godly sorrow that leads to repentance. Huh? Who hath woe? Who hath sorrow? See, the, this is opposite of the, of the old type of wine. Right. Right? Amen. It's a comparison. Proverbs tells us what the old wine will do. The old wine will, it'll woe you by knocking you out. You'll wake up woe by being in jail. Like, whoa, how did I get here? Like, whoa, how did she get next to me? Come on, somebody. Huh? That's what the, the devil will wow you with. Huh? Wow, I got a life sentence. Come on now. The devil will wow you too. But the, the devil's wow and God's wow is a lot different. Right. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, I right. said the devil's wow and God's wow is a lot amen, different. Amen, amen, amen. Huh? And this next one is that who had sorrow? When you tarry long at the alcohol, you're going to have some sorrow all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to be sorrow that you're hugging that toilet bowl and the person that used it before you didn't flush it. <laughs> Huh? You're gonna have sorrow, huh? You'll have sorrow, huh? When the liver starts to act up. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Right. Huh? You have sorrow. But listen, in God with the new wine, you will have godly sorrow. Come on, man. That leads to repentance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, this is the type of sorrow you want. You want to have godly sorrow. Because the Bible says that godly sorrow leads us. To repentance. Yeah, yeah. But that, that means there is a worldly sorrow that, you know what the worldly sorrow does? The worldly sorrow leads you to depression. That's right. Oh, yeah. The worldly sorrow leads you to condemnation. Yes. My, my, my. The worldly sorrow leads you to, oh, woe is me. There it is. Uh oh. But godly sorrow leads you to repentance. What is repentance? Repentance means, God, I want to change. God, forgive me for acting like a knucklehead. God, forgive me for not listening to you. Forgive me for not listening to the Bible. Forgive me for not listening to the preacher, for the preaching. God, I want to change. I want to change. I want to repent. I want to turn from my evil ways and turn to your ways. That's what godly sorrow will do. Godly sorrow will bring conviction to your heart, will bring conviction to your soul. This is why in a message like this, in a church like this, you come and you feel a little uneasy because the preaching is rolling down your alley. The preaching is, is like shooting at your heart. And it's like who told the pastor? And who told the preacher? And, and I, who put my mail in his mailbox? Nobody did. It's just the Holy Ghost, my friend. Fix this microphone because the devil is a lie. Hello, somebody. But it is the preaching like this. That, listen, as you, as you hear the word of God, you will get godly sorrow that I hope that it will lead you to repentance. Amen. Godly sorrow. Praise the Lord. My check. See, the devil don't want you to hear this. Come on. Huh? Huh? Come on. You will have godly sorrow that leads to repentance. You will be broken. The Bible, you know, the, the word of God described, the Bible describes the word as a hammer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a scripture that says the word is like a hammer. Come on. Huh? A hammer. Uh, what was that? Hellboy. Have you seen that one? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Okay. I don't like the name, but. <laughs> and he has a, he, I said, what's so special about that guy? He has a big hand, right? Oh, yeah. And then oh, the yeah. commercial, they say, oh, so what is your super talent? What does that thing do? He says it smashes things. <laughs> huh? It's like the Bible, boy. The Bible smashes sin out of our lives. Amen. 
Listen, this is why it gets uncomfortable. This is why it hurts. This is why the demons inside get mad. Come on. Hey, now. How dare him talk about my sin? <laughs> How dare him pick at me? <laughs> Pastor's picking on me. <laughs> I'm just preaching what God put in my heart. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not here to please you. I'm here to please God. I, listen, I'm preaching to the audience of one. God gave me this message, my friend, and this is what he, this is what I'm gonna preach. And the word of God is like a hammer. It will break. Come on, it'll break oh, us, my friend. But I don't know about you. I need to be broken. I need it to be broken. Because listen, it's when I am broken that I am open. Sometimes we're not open to the things of God. We're not open to the message. We're not open to what God wants to do. It's because we have not been broken. Oh, come on. But when you're broken, you're open. Come on, Fred. The third thing that Terry Long would do. It says, who hath woe, who hath sorrow, who hath contentions? What does contentions mean? It means beef. Oh. It means you got, we, got, we got problems. Huh? It, it, it means you're having a conflict. Uh -oh. huh? Who hath contentions? Who has conflicts? Who has beef with somebody? Huh? The scripture says, who hath woe, who hath sorrow, who hath contentions? Huh? Let me tell you, so listen, bef you know, before we, you know, before we used to drink and used to want, used to want to fight everybody in the club. Come on now. All of a sudden, women turn to cat women. <laughs> huh? Right? I want to get my nails done because I want to look cute. No, you don't want to look cute. You wanted to scratch. <laughs> you wanted some secret weapons. Hello, somebody. Huh? Right? We have contentions. That's what alcohol makes you do. It makes you want to fight. Huh? Right? How many, how many of you ever experienced that? You yeah, yeah, thought you yeah. were Hercules. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. right. You got a few beers in you. You thought you were like Hercules. You thought you were... You can fight. You can take anybody else. You can take anybody no. out. Right. Huh? Listen, but the new wine, the Holy Spirit, when you tarry long, you get filled with the Holy Spirit. You know what will happen? You will start beef with the devil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Come on. Huh? When you learn to tarry long at his presence, when you learn to get on your knees and you learn to pray and you're there in the presence of God, all of a sudden God will begin to speak to you and he'll give you visions and revelation. Uh, he, will, he will give you, my friend, he'll give you a plan. And let me tell you what that plan is for. That plan is for to cause some trouble in the enemy's camp, my friend. There's been time and time after again that I've been in the presence of God. You can just leave it like that please because it's throwing me off amen praise the lord and i know they can hear me anyways but listen amen. it's in the presence of god where all of a sudden my friend god begins to speak to me and he says you know what you gotta do you need to go visit this person you need yeah. to go pray for this person amen. you need to do this yeah. drama you need to plan this rally you need to go pray for this individual and all of a sudden you know what that is that's starting trouble in the enemy's camp because the enemy doesn't want us to witness to nobody the enemy doesn't doesn't want us to pray for nobody. The enemy doesn't want us to encourage nobody. The enemy doesn't want us to preach. He doesn't want us to serve God. But when you tarry long in his presence, all of a sudden, God will begin to speak to you. And God likes to start a fight with the devil. God likes a good tussle with the enemy. And he, he, he ain't the one doing the fighting. He sends us to do the fighting. Because if it was him, it would be no contest. Hello, somebody. He says, devil, I'm a, you're lightweight. Let me see. Let me send one of my servants. Let me send one of my saints. They can handle you. They can take you out. When you're under the influence of the new wine. You will start beef with the devil. Being filled with the new wine causes you to want to fight the devil and his crew. Hello. And his posse. And it's demons. You'll, 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 you'll preach against homosexuality. Come on. Right. You'll preach against abortion. Come on. Yeah, bro. I told you a couple weeks ago, we don't roll like that. Right. You got pregnant, you can have the baby, man. That's right. 
That's your decision, but you want to ask me for advice? Have a baby. Amen. That's a child of God. You leave the results up to God. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't want to have a baby, have a passion for purity. Come on. Come on. Stay pure. That's why we have passion for purity for the girls. That's why we have pure courage for the guys. Huh? Come on, somebody. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? Wait, wait, wait. See, the devil, the devil will get mad when we start saying stuff like this. The demons get all mad. I don't care. Huh? We're starting to fight with the devil by sending all these girls to the women's convention. Man, come on now. Man. He's mad, but I'm glad. Hey. Hey. Mad. You know what I'm saying? Well, you know, maybe we shouldn't take, we shouldn't push to take all those girls. Maybe we should. Let's just take it easy and just those can go, can go and, and just take it easy and take it blase. No, no, that's not how your pastor thinks. That's not how your pastor thinks. Right. The way I think I say how we need more mighty women of God. More soldiers for Christ. We need more troops to be armed and dangerous. We need more mamas with their boots on. Ain't afraid to take their heels off. Roll up their sleeves in the spirits. I know we can fight in the flesh. We don't fight like that. Our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual principalities and powers in high places. Fourthly, who have babbling? This is self-explanatory. <laughs> huh? This is why. What are they doing on the Monday? What kind of tongue is that? What kind of language is that? It's called the heavenly language. Right, man. Amen. Yes. Amen. It, it sounds a lot better than when, when you're dr in your drunk talk. Hello. <laughs> it sounds a lot better than when you're drunk trying to preach to me. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Huh? When you learn to tarry long at his presence, you will be baptized in the Holy Spirit with the initial evidence of speaking in tongues. You will be, God will give you your own prayer language. Right. He will baptize you in the Holy Spirit, and you will be baptized in the Holy Spirit. You begin to speak in tongues, and, 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 and listen, don't try to understand it, because we, you can't understand it. The Bible says that our, we don't understand it, but He understands it. Yeah. Right, right. But so many people limit it, and the way they limit it is because they don't tarry long in His presence. Yeah. I believe that if some would just learn to tarry a little bit longer, God will baptize you in the Holy Spirit, and you will begin to speak in tongues, but because we're so in a rush, because we have a schedule, because we put other things before God, we say, okay, God, I gave you my five minutes, I gave you my ten minutes, I gave you fifteen minutes today, God, that's a lot, God, I gotta go now, God, you should be real proud of me, because I gave you fifteen minutes of my day in prayer. My friend, Jesus, told the disciples, could you not even watch for one hour? Could you not even pray for one hour? This is why we have one hour of prayer before service. Before, Because we want to teach our people how to pray. We want to teach our people how to tarry long. We want to raise up mighty warriors, mighty soldiers, prayer warriors, people that love Jesus, people that are tongue-talking, demon-stomping. Not church-hopping. We want to raise up strong warriors. Strong warriors that learn to tarry long. And when you do, God will give you your prayer language. You'll be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And yes, it's going to sound like babble. And yes, you're probably going to feel a little like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. It's okay. Don't worry about what people think. Don't worry about what you think. Just worry that what he thinks. Worry about what just think. Just thank God that he is touching your life. Just thank God that he has filled you. That he has counted you worthy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Come on now. Thank you. Jesus. He you worthy. Come on, come on, come on. And if you haven't spoken in tongues, doesn't mean that you're not worthy. That's right. Just means that you probably gotta tarry longer. That's right. Tarry longer. Tarry longer. Well, I think an hour is good. I think an hour at church is good enough. God has so much more for you, my friend. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those who love him. 
For those who love him, see when you love somebody, you love to spend time with them. Yeah. When you love somebody, you love to spend quality time with them. How much quality time do you spend with the Lord? Well, I pray on the way to work as I drive. Really? And as you drive and you're listening to your worldly station, and you're distracted and you're, come on somebody. Right. Fifthly, who hath wounds without cause? Who hath wounds without cause? That's what happens. Listen, you will acquire spiritual battle scars that come through a life of sacrifice. When you tarry long, you will, be, you will acquire spiritual battle scars that come through a life of sacrifice. They come through a life of sacrifice. That's what happens. When you learn to tarry long, you, God will speak to you. And when he speaks, let me tell you something. He challenges us. He challenges us to do things that we don't want to do sometimes, but that are going to bring him glory. And as we respond to that challenge, we begin to sacrifice. You know what happens? We begin to bear spiritual scars. Scars. Listen, if I'm going to go into battle, I, don't, I want to go into battle with somebody that has some scars that they've been in battle before. All right, All right. I don't want to go into battle with somebody who has a clean sword, a shiny sword, a shiny shield. I want to go into war with somebody that got some dent on their shield, some scratches on their sword. They got, they got a few scars on their body. Paul says, I bear the marks of Christ on my body. Come on. This is why sometimes you see us leaders with we got spiritual scars. Sometimes you might see us with our head down. Because ministry ain't easy. Working with people ain't easy. Praying for people ain't easy. But as our face is down, don't feel sorry for us. Because we're just going to look up and say, Amen. Hallelujah. Because we ain't sad. We just pray. We're just living an intercessory lifestyle. But you're going to bear battle scars. People are going to hurt you in ministry. You're going to get hurt. You'll, you'll probably get hurt in the church. You're, gonna, you're not going to understand some stuff. I'm going to hurt you. The preaching's going to hurt you. But you learn to stick it out. So I got my dick today. Yeah. Some of you, you got deemed up today. Some of you got deemed up, man. You're like, Ooh. It's all right. The Holy Spirit, he's the cut man. He's the cut man. He'll, he'll heal you up right now at the altar right now. Huh? Who has wounds without cause? And lastly, who has redness of eyes? What this means for the new wine is that you will have vision to see souls covered in the red blood of Christ. You will have vision to see many souls covered in the blood of Jesus. Redness of eyes is your vision for souls. Amen. When you tarry long at the altar, when you tarry long to receive that new wine, all of a sudden it's not just about you, but it's about others being saved. It's about your family coming to Christ. It's about your children serving God. It's about, it's about the legacy that you leave behind of people that you have reached for God's honor and for God's glory. We have to be a church that learns to tarry. Because God is doing a new thing. He's doing a new thing. I want you to stand to your feet. He's doing a new thing. See, the new wine is the new covenant in the blood of Christ. This represents His love, His mercy, His salvation, and His power. At the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, God was doing a new thing. He was doing a new thing. He was transitioning into a new era of His mercy, of His power, of His love, and of His grace. He was making new skins or vessels like the Gentiles and the poor and the lowly. He was making new skins, new vessels out of 
the Gentiles and out of the poor and out of the lonely and out of the despised. It reminds me of like in 1967. All of a sudden, God began to new, do a new thing in Christianity. He began to make some new skins. He began to make some new vessels out of treasures, out of darkness, out of drug addicts and gang members and prostitutes. God said, I need some new wine skins. I need some new vessels. Because he was about to pour out new wine. He was about to pour out the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. This is why Jesus had to come. This is why he had to preach the good news. This is how why he had to reach the 12 disciples and establish a church of about 120. And then he died on the cross and he resurrected. And 50 days later, he ascended to the heaven. Why didn't Jesus stay? Why couldn't he just stay with us, pastor? Why couldn't we could have had Jesus right now and took the world for Jesus? But he understood the only only way that the new wine could be poured out is if he was taken up and he can go up into heaven and receive the cup from the Father and begin to pour out what you see now, the evidence of the Holy Ghost. That's what the day of Pentecost was about. It was about God pouring out the new wine into new wine skins, into new wine skins. You used to be that old but you're not that old you no more. You're a new man in Christ. You're a new woman in Christ. You're not a drug addict no more. You're not a gang member no more. You're not a pimp no more. You're not a player 